Are the wheels already in motion for Jim Ratcliffe's full takeover of Manchester United? That's the question that I want to speak about in this video. Now, give me 10 minutes of your time. Let me piece this all together because there's been lots of stuff that's happened since the 24th of December. It's been a pretty busy first month and lots of positives. But something happened yesterday with Ineos getting more control, not just on the football operations side, but on the business side. Are we seeing the start of the Glazers moving towards becoming almost silent majority owners of our club? I want to piece it all together and bring you the evidence. And you can let me know what you think in the comments below. I think this will be an interesting one. I feel like it will be anyway. Let's go back to this, okay? Because this was the statement that was released on the 24th of December of the 25% takeover. And part of that, of course, was the announcement here that Jim Ratcliffe would provide an extra $300 million worth of investment. And that would get him more shares in the club. So already... Jim Ratcliffe's increased his ownership from 25% to nearly 29%, and he is the single biggest shareholder at Manchester United, more than any Glazer individually. Of course, together, they still have the majority control. But the questions before the takeover were all about, is there going to be enough change? Is Jim Ratcliffe going to be able to do anything? Is he just going to have to sit there and listen to what the Glazers want him to do? And pretty much everything since he's taken over has pointed towards the opposite. Let me run through all of this. Now, this was the uh, meeting that Jim Ratcliffe had with Manchester United fans, right? That was he met the Manchester United Supporters Trust, Fans Advisory Board, um, and the Fan Forum, I think, as well. And part of that was this bit here. This was just somebody who was in those meetings. It was just so different to everything we've heard from the Glazers. Football first. Commercial revenue is a consequence of that. Effective decision-making. Decision -making. And we've seen that repeated on like three, four different occasions. And I guarantee you, in two, three weeks' time, when we get the Ratcliffe interview and he faces the press, we're going to hear this repeated again and again and again. This is the statement, the mission statement that's going to keep getting repeated because it's what they want. And when it comes to effective decision-making, it was that Omar Barada decision announcement which took us all by surprise. It was a massive coup, not just for the club, but for Brailsford and Ratcliffe, because they had convinced, and I don't even think much, much convincing was really needed, but basically they chose the new CEO. And importantly, as part of that, as I said, football first, the statement, the club is determined to put football and performance on the pitch back at the heart of everything we do. We do. The massive shade towards the Glazers there. So on top of all of that, we've now seen that in an all-staff meeting at Old Trafford on Wednesday, Staff were told that Ineos' involvement is going to go further than just football operations. This is what the article said on The Athletic and The Telegraph. I'll read through both. Manchester United staff have been informed that Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos' remit will encompass more than football operations. Down here, the Glazer family have reflected on previously agreed arrangements and recognised the scope of the former's influence will need to be more broadly defined. The Ratcliffe's team will also liaise with the Glazers on business decisions. The Telegraph over here reporting on the same piece of news. The Glazers have agreed that Ineos should have a broader influence encompassing key decisions across the business. United employees were informed of that. It paves the way for greater alignment on key decisions and will give Ratcliffe and Ineos the opportunity to have a significant influence on a range of matters. And that right there is an immediate increase in the power of Ratcliffe and Ineos. And I'm gonna I'll speak about the revenues in a little bit now. But within the space of a month, the conversations have now moved away from is this change really gonna do anything to Manchester United appointing Omar Barada from City, stealing him away, Jim Ratcliffe meeting. The fans meeting the press, meeting um, at the fan representatives and pledging that football will go back at the heart of the club. The statement of the Bradder appointment also reiterating that. And now the Glazers have relinquished more power on the business side of things. Because if we take a look at the numbers here, this is the latest uh, money table showing revenues of the biggest clubs in the world. Manchester United are fifth. You can knock City and PSG out of that, really, considering that's oil funded money. So the top three clubs in the world still are Real Madrid, 
Barcelona and Manchester United. But from a business perspective, we've stagnated massively, right? We have a look here. If you look at the growth between 2009, our well, revenues are what, 459 million? Is this in dollars? I think this is in dollars. Yeah, it is. To 2014, where it jumped to 737, you can see that there's been stagnation basically since around about 2017. There hasn't been huge growth. There was a massive dip because of COVID. Numbers have gone back up, but what? They're 820 now compared to 790 in 2019. In four years, the revenue's gone up 30 million overall. It's not a huge growth, but Manchester United still are one of the top five clubs in the world. But the Glazers, by doing this, have admitted not only do they not know anything about the football operations, but they're also a hindrance to the business side too. It's a massive shift and a really important point. And you know what? I've, I've been sort of trying to piece this together in my mind to, to understand what Ratcliffe's trying to do. And I, I, this is kind of, I suppose this is more a conspiracy, not conspiracy theory, but this is just kind of like just the, the logic in my head. Let's take a look at the Omar Barada appointment. Now, The Athletic here with an article looking, uh, offering a little bit more insight into how it happened, right? Uh, the final say the decision of this magnitude was always going to involve the Glazers. The final decision, a genuinely collective one with Barada, not simply presented to the Glazers as, you know, somebody just to be signed off. You know what that strikes me as? I'm sure everybody knows somebody in their life who likes to think that all good ideas are their idea. And sometimes... You, you kind of just let them have it. There is no way that Ineos, I mean, on paper, Ineos were going there to say, do you approve of this? In reality, they're saying, this is who should be our CEO. Give me a thumbs up. They weren't going there asking for um, a back and forth conversation. They were there basically to tell the Glazers, this is who we think should be our CEO. And they signed off on it. And it feels like Ratcliffe, Ratcliffe is take, has taken and is taking a very different approach with the Glazers than I would ever possibly be able to do because of my emotional attachment to Manchester United. And I've seen the damage that they've done. Now, Sheikh Jassim went more for that fan side of things. The, the statement that came out when the 9-2 Foundation put their bid in, restoring Manchester United to the former glories. And the Glazers were pissed off at it. Even though it's completely true, the Glazers were pissed off at it. Let's rewind here to, uh, uh, I remember covering this, what was it, October 2022? Jeez. That's a long ass time ago. Is that how long we've been doing this? My God. It's a long grey now. Anyway, it was in this meeting where Jim Ratcliffe said something that it made us, uh, like I don't know, made, made, the, made the fans' blood boil. He said, I've met Joel and Avram they are the nicest people, I have to say. Proper gentlemen. And it rightly pissed all United fans off. But it really kind of feels like Ratcliffe is playing the, the good cop game. He knows and sort of understands at this point, and, and I actually think he's right on this one, that the bullshit approach is just going to be met with... Uh, an angry response. And the only way to really get anywhere with the Glazers is to kind of massage their ego. It feels like that's what's kind of happened so far with the decision-making ability of Ineos. And, of course, Ineos have to be involved in two major decisions that have happened at this football club. The redevelopment of Old Trafford is going to require huge investment. And probably a lot of it's going to come from Ineos. I wonder if that's going to be a, maybe an equity swap. Yeah, I don't think that... I, I just made that up in my head there. Maybe they would pledge more investment that would go directly into Old Trafford if the Glazers sold off X amount of percentage. I think there's uh, there's points to do in the next few years when loans will get... Um, I think it's like balloon payments to do with loans that need to be paid back... At, Ultimately, Jim, we can talk. We can speak about Carrington as well. But there's so much like massive investment that is needed, and Ineos's expertise is needed. But this kind of feels like, as I said, like Ratcliffe had started. The steps are already being taken 
towards that full takeover and towards the Glazers ultimately becoming like silent majority partners in Manchester United. Not really involved in any sort of massive decision-making process. And it suits them. And it annoys me so much, but it suits them because they have to do less work and they'll make more money. It is a win-win situation. And if it fails, it's not our fault. It was Jim Ratcliffe. But if Ratcliffe wins, yeah, the Glazers win. They'll get more money. But Manchester United will win. Quite literally. We'll start winning trophies again. We'll start having on the pitch success again. Commercially, we will start making more money. We can start investing properly into the infrastructure that's required. And it just feels like Ratcliffe's chosen to go down this path where instead of trying to have conflict with the Glazers, he's trying to let them... Well, I, 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 I don't know how to describe it, really. Because I never expected this, that the Glazers would sort of step back from the business side of things. But think about it, right? For 25%, well, 29% now, they have given up 100% control of the football operations and now part control of the business operations. They've given up so much control for, for relatively little as an ownership percentage. I think they're just going to become like backseat silent majority owners. And that Ineos and their influence, as was reported here, is going to keep growing and growing. And the, the signs really are quite positive early on. More is needed. This is just the beginning. But the direction that we are heading, the, the, the path that we are walking down is far different to the path where we were only a few months ago asking whether Ratcliffe's going to be able to make any actual real change. Real change has already started. More change is needed. I think more change is coming. I want to know what you think about this in the comments. Maybe I'm going to be going overboard, but you can let me know as you always do.